As you can see, we've got a hole in an elbow here, but it's also going shiny and weak for the whole area around. So we're going to mend it in quite a big circle, which will strengthen it up, and then do the same on the other side for matching. I put the cereal packet rough shape down into the sleeve. It's stretched it slightly. That's what you want. You don't want it loose. And now I'm going to take a glass and I want to make a round shape around here. You can see, in fact, where I've roughed it up before. But um, it's a good idea to work out where you want it to be. And I'm going to use a chalk. Now, if you don't have a chalk, you can just pin it roughly and use um, a running stitch, there we are, a tacking stitch. There we are, so that's where we're going to work. I'm going to use a darning wool. I bought a new packet, they don't cost very much, um, and it's strong. It's partly wool and partly nylon, but that does give it strength for darning. Uh, although this is not darning, of course. Um, and I've threaded it onto a needle with quite a nice point. You don't want those thick wool needles. I threaded my needle and bought the needle from underneath the outside of the circle where we're going to do the blanket stitch up to a direct line from the elbow and that's because each time we start stitching we're going to need to make a loop. So here's my little stay stitch so that it's nice and strong. Here I'm going to make a loop and that'll get us started on our blanket stitch. So it gets us the right angle to begin with. And each time we change, we're going to do a loop up here. So there will be a double stitch there, but that will be all right. Now you want the stitch to be nice and even. As you can see, I'm working with both hands. That's because we've made this whole area firm. So I need both hands so that we can transfer the needle and thread across and keep it fairly flat. You'll fall into a, a rhythm of scale of stitching fairly soon. To begin with, you might feel a little bit nervous. Remember that the needle is always pointing to the center, and that's what will give you that slightly circular look. Um, it won't be perfect, but here we go. So the stitch, you go down to the outer of the circle, come up, even distance each time, thread behind, and pull. And out up, thread behind, and pull. So you just keep going all the way around till you've done one line. I've completed the circle. I'm getting short of thread, and at some points I had to twist the thread back into shape again, actually. So I'm coming up to the edge. This is my last, um, my last blanket stitch. There, there we are. Now I'm going to make a loop again and come in on the next one. Now I'm quite short of thread, so I'm also going to demonstrate changing thread. There we are. Do you sort of mean about it being a line? Now when you go to the next phase, you put your needle just where the right angle of the stitch is and come up. And I'm going to change, change thread here. So that means once around my right angle there and then take it to the back. We'll sort it later. There we are. I threaded a needle just before. So I come in from the outside up to that area there. And once around it'll be slightly lumpy but it'll disappear. And we're off again. So go to the corner of your previous blanket stitch, come up again, and the corner, and come up, always aiming into the center. So you just keep going like that all the way around. There. This is uh, two and a thirds. And uh, the thread's got a bit short, so I've done one more stitch around the right angle. And then again, I'm just going to take it to the back and leave it to finish off later. I've re-threaded. I'm going to bring it in from the side and secure it up on the top 
Um, now it might look slightly lumpy but I'm not going to worry now because it'll sort itself out later. There we are. There. And then start all over again and I'll be able to do more and more circles with less thread the closer we get. Now you can see that these little stitches are getting smaller. You try and make them even but it won't be perfect. There are two ways of working like this. You can work in a spiral, but I didn't want that because I wanted the circle to be, it's not gonna be perfect, but to be a circle. So each time you get to the corner here, sorry, the starting place here, you have to create a loop and start with a loop. And if you always make it the same place, then you have a line going towards the center, but it doesn't distort the design. You do that because you've got to have the right angle in your starting stitch. There. And then I'm off again. Round in the next loop. When going round the corners, you need to miss out, and you'll find this quite obvious, um, miss out a couple. So there we are. I'm going to miss that one out. But also, you don't want to pull it over tight. You're still making a sort of box. You've got to do that because otherwise you won't be able to fill these gaps where we have no knitwear at all. So this is an example. There's a hole under there, but I'm still making a reasonable loop because uh, otherwise the pattern, we won't be creating a fabric. There. Now you can see it's definitely going oblong. I'm not clever enough to make it a complete circle, but I'm gonna do my best and um, show you how it goes. There we are. Um, it's going quite well now. Can you see how we're creating a new fabric over the gap? And because this is a combination of wool and uh, synthetic, which I know is not great from a biodegradable point of view, but it is from a strength point of view, then it will withstand wear so I'm going to keep going round, and you're making a cloth at this point, and I'll show you the finishing stitch. Coming to the last stitches, which I'll do, but you can see that these lines here was when I was taking the uh, blanket stitch completely round in a circle, then moving up to the next one, and that creates a neat line. But at some point I started going in a spiral because it was becoming too difficult to be too neat, and also because there was a hole here so it was difficult to leap forward. Um, and that's when we started making this new cloth. Um, it's not perfect, but I think it's pretty good. So I'm just gonna do one stitch now into the middle. There we are, there's the middle hole. I'm going to do one more stitch across the middle. Let's do it like this, proper blanket stitch. And across to the other side, there, so round the back and across there. So it's more like a chain stitch and I'm going to put the needle to the back and then finish off. I'll show you the finishing off at the back. Oh, I think this is looking rather beautiful. Look, it looks a bit like a sea urchin. Um, this is where the thread came up in the middle. So I will just do a few stitches over to secure it. One, two, that's it secured. But then I will weave it in and out because I don't, what I don't want is tails. They'll be annoying. So weave it in and out a little bit. I'm going to ruin that beautiful look at this point. There. And then trim. And all of these are the threads that uh, started, started with. Some of them I can just knot and then weave in and out the final uh, threads just so that they are neat. And some of them I'll re-thread with a needle and just weave in and out again. So that will tidy up the back. So all the threads at the back have gone and uh, it's not a perfect circle at all, but it's woven over those two holes. And the final thing to do is to give it a press, a steam press. Now, I never ever touch the jumper with the iron, just steam it. 
which will steam up the video, and then pat it flat and leave it to dry. Job done.